Okay, here's the bottom line. Make these changes to your BIOS settings, run these commands, edit these files with this content, and that's it. You're ready to spin up your first gaming VM. But don't worry, if any of that was new to you, stick around and it will all make sense very soon. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve, and this is Blaine Man Studios, where I make creative stuff and talk about the technology behind it. As a quick recap of this series, in part zero, I showed you what we're building and talked about the hardware requirements for VFIO. In part one, we installed Linux. I chose Fedora, but these next steps should work for any Linux distribution you might be using with maybe some tweaks. And in this video, we're doing BIOS and host configuration so that your Linux computer is ready to pass your graphics card in to a virtual machine for gaming level performance inside that VM, no matter what operating system it's running. Let's get started. To get to the BIOS setup menu, power your computer totally off and turn it back on and then press F2 or delete or whatever button it says will bring up the setup menu. First, you wanna poke around the settings and enable anything that looks like it has to do with virtualization. For me, this just means enabling Intel VMX virtualization technology, which is essentially Intel's branding for hardware virtualization, which is a few extra CPU instructions for things that virtual machines do. Next, you'll need to enable PCI pass-through. For me, on an Intel platform, this is called VT-D. On AMD, it might be called AMD-VI, or you might find something called IOMMU or PCI pass-through. If you see those things, make sure they're enabled. But if you don't find it, that's okay. If your platform supports VFIO, it's possible that it's enabled automatically when you enable virtualization. Click Save and Exit, and your computer will reboot. Now we're going to configure your host operating system, which is Linux. If you're running Fedora like me, you should be able to follow along line by line. But if you're running another distro, you might need to make some changes based on your package manager, bootloader, and how your distro builds init RAM FS. Or any of the files for those things might be in slightly different places. I will explain what all of those things are, but first, let's make sure we have the required programs installed. On Fedora, run sudo dnf group install with optional virtualization. This will get you QMU, KVM, libvirt, vert manager, and all of their different pieces. This command installs all required and optional packages in the virtualization group using a package manager called DNF with administrator privileges. If any of that wasn't clear, you can use man sudo or man DNF to learn more about those commands, their arguments, and flags. It's a good idea to get in the habit of doing this because you probably shouldn't trust someone random on the internet like me to run commands on your computer without at least knowing a little bit about what they do. If you're using a different Linux distribution, you might not have DNF, but you will have a package manager. The package manager is the standard and secure way of installing programs on your flavor of Linux. For this step, you'll need to figure out what your distribution's package manager is and use it to search for and install everything related to QMU, KVM, libvirt, and vert manager. Once you have everything installed, you might need to reboot your computer. If you just installed KVM, the easiest way to get its kernel modules to load is to just restart your computer. But we have a few more things to take care of, so let's do those first. We're going to make changes in a few places, but it's going to accomplish two things. The first is that we're going to configure your computer to start with a VFIO and IOMMU enabled. The second is that we're going to set your GPU to be ready to be passed in to a virtual machine. Once you do this, you won't be able to use your GPU, your gaming GPU, outside of the virtual machine. So you will need either integrated graphics or another dedicated GPU like we talked about in part zero. Before we get into the instructions on how to do this, I think it will be helpful to talk briefly about how a Linux computer starts up. The simplified explanation is that first, your BIOS runs and picks a device to boot. This is typically your hard drive or SSD. That drive has instructions on what to do next. Those instructions are called the bootloader. The bootloader will load the kernel, give it some parameters, and then pass it control. The kernel is going to keep control of your PC, but it's going to start up all of the hardware and software your computer uses. 
the first things it does are going to be done in a context called early user space, using a chunk of memory called initRAMFS. When it's done in that context, it's going to connect to your main file system, start up a bunch of programs, and give you a login prompt. To configure this process to work for VFIO, first we want to grab the IDs for our gaming GPU. Run the command lspci-nnk. This will list information on all PCI devices and display the IDs we're looking for. For me, I have four PCI devices associated with my NVIDIA graphics card, and these IDs are listed here in the square brackets. So I'm going to write down all four of these ID numbers and save them for later. Next, we want to edit our bootloader configuration so that when it starts the Linux kernel, it passes a few extra command line arguments. Every bootloader will have a way to add Linux kernel command line arguments, but I'm going to show you how to do it on Grub, the bootloader used by Fedora and many other Linux distros. So run sudo gedit etsy sysconfig grub. This will open a graphical text editor with administrator privileges to edit the grub config. We're going to add the command line arguments inside the quotes at the end of the line that says grub command line Linux. So first we have Intel IOMMU equals on. This enables IOMMU, and if you're on an AMD platform, this would be AMD IOMMU equals on. Next we have IOMMU equals PT. This sets IOMMU into pass-through mode. Then rddriver.pre equals VFIO PCI. This forces the VFIO kernel module, or driver, to be loaded early. Then the last argument we want to add is PCI stub IDs equals, and then the full list of IDs we wrote down earlier, separated by commas. There are three kinds of drivers to be aware of here. The first is the graphics driver, which uses graphics cards to display things to the screen. The second is the VFIO driver, which passes things into VMs. And the third is a stub driver, which is a placeholder that doesn't do anything. Here we're telling our kernel to assign the graphics card to the stub driver. This is helpful because then the graphics driver won't grab that GPU and start using it for things because it thinks it's in use. And when we're ready to start up our VM, the VFIO driver can steal it from the stub driver, the stub driver's fine with it, and the graphics card wasn't doing anything, so nothing's interrupted. Okay, so with these new arguments added, and a little explanation on what a stub driver is, save and close the file. Now we just need to run this command to apply the grub configuration, so that next time our computer starts up, it uses these new parameters. As long as there is no error, these changes should take effect next time we restart. But before we do that, the next step is to configure Drakit to include the necessary modules so that VFIO loads when our computer starts up. Drakit is a way of configuring initRAMFS, which is the file system your kernel uses in early user space before it connects to your main file system. So let's create a new configuration file to be read by Drakit. You can name this file anything ending in .conf, so I'm gonna call mine local.conf. Run this command and add this to the newly created file. Save it and close out. Then to apply the configuration, run this command. The last thing we're gonna do is totally optional, but kind of nice. We're going to configure your desktop environment to automatically start up Vert Manager every time you log in. I'm using GNOME, but this should work for any desktop environment that conforms to the desktop application auto start specification which includes KDE and others. So first, use the make directory command to create an auto start directory in the .config folder of your home directory. Then use the copy command to copy the vert manager desktop file from user share applications to your new auto start directory. This is all we need and we could restart here. But since Vert Manager requires administrator privileges, it's going to ask for your password a second time after you log in every time you log in, which is pretty annoying. So we're going to do two things to fix this. The first is we're going to modify that desktop auto start file so that it uses sudo to ask for administrator privileges. Then we're going to add a special sudo rule that says if it's me or my auto start file and I'm using sudo to ask for administrator privileges for Vert Manager, don't ask for my password, just do it. So let's edit the auto start file. Change the exec line to say sudo user bin vert manager. 
save and exit. To confirm that user bin vert manager was the correct thing to enter here, run the command which vert manager, and it should give you the same path. The next thing is to give yourself passwordless permission to run vert manager using sudo. Create a new file in etsy sudoers.d and name it something like vert manager. Add a line like this and replace Steve with your username. You do want to be careful that you enter this text correctly, because if you make a mistake here, there is a possibility you can lock yourself out of using sudo to get administrator privileges, which would make it a lot harder to fix the mistake. So with this complete, you can save and close out. You can check that it worked by starting a new terminal and running sudo vert manager, and it should start without asking for your password. Now you're ready to reboot and everything should work. After the reboot, there are a few commands you can run to make sure everything did work. First, run lsmod and pipe it into a grep search for the text string kvm by typing this. This will tell you if the kvm kernel module is loaded. Then run dmessage and pipe it into a case insensitive grep for iommu by typing this. You should see this message if iommu was correctly enabled. Now run cat proc command line and you should see all of the Linux kernel command line arguments we set. Then run lspci-nnk again and we want to make sure our graphics card is being used by PCI stub instead of a graphics driver like NVIDIA, AMD, or Nouveau. If all that was successful and if vert manager started automatically or if you want to launch it manually like this, you're done! You've made it through both the scariest and most difficult parts. You're ready for the next video where we'll go over creating your first Windows VM with gaming level performance. Check out the description for commands, links, and corrections, and there should be a link to the next video if it's up. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay bland.